Hello and welcome to Algebra. Today we're going to continue our lesson on factoring trinomials. This time the leading coefficient is going to be something other than 1. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So the first difference that we're going to see is that we're not just going to look at the factors of 2. We're going to look at the factors of 2 times 5. Well, this sign, the sign of the constant, that's going to stay exactly the way it was. We know that we're going to be adding the factors. And we know that they're going to be the same sign. Well, the difference is that instead of looking at the factors of 2, like I said before, we're looking at the factors of a times c. If you think of this as ax squared plus bx plus c. That's a standard way to look at a polynomial, a quadratic polynomial. We're going to look at a times c, the factors of that. Well, a times c is 10. So we're going to look at the factors of 10. Well, what are the factors of 10? 10 is just 2 times 5. It's a little easier, not necessarily in this one because it's a simple, um, uh, simple number. But when you look at a more complicated version of that, uh, something that has a lot of factors, here there's just two prime factors, you have, say, one with five, six, or seven prime factors, then it really does help to break this in into its prime factors. So 10, don't forget the obvious one, 1 times 10. Does 2 work? Yes. 2 times 5. Does 3 work? No. 4? No. 5? Yes. And we're up the next column, so we can continue. We want to find something that multiplies to give me a positive, we found that, but adds to give me 11. So we're looking at 1 and 10. Those add to give you 11. Now there's two main versions that you can do. First one's called the box method. Now in the box method, we're just going to go through and put a 2 by 2 square. Five x squared will go in the top left, two goes in the bottom right, and then these two, notice if they're the same factor, how do we get a positive 11? Well they're going to have to both be positive. These two signs are going to go in either corner, they're interchangeable. Remember we have the commutative property of multiplication, so you can switch those around. But we also need to put an x with it for this factor, uh, for this uh, version to work, the box method. Now we're going to go ahead and put parentheses in the top and the left. Now what's the sign? Well, this is positive, so we're going to be adding here. This is positive, so this sign will be positive. And now we're going to break this apart. Again, I like to think of these as factors. Well, this is just 5. So I don't really need to break that apart. This is just well, 5 times x times x. This is just 1 times x. Don't really need to put the 1. This is 2 times 5 times x. And this is just 2. So we're going to look across horizontally and vertically and see if we find any common factors. Vertically, we can see that there's an x in common. There's also a 5. Vertically, there's nothing in common. If that happens, you just put a 1. Now we're going to look horizontally. There is an x in common, but there's nothing else. So we just keep it as x. You could put a 1x, but it's not really necessary. Going across here, horizontally, we have a 2 and nothing else. So it's just a 2. So we have 5x plus 1 times x plus 2. Now we don't want to just say, hey, this is the answer, without going through and verifying. So we're going to go through, use the FOIL method, first, outside, inside, last, and we're going to make sure that this actually works. The first gives me 5x squared plus, the outside is 10x, inside 1x, and last is 2. We need to combine these linear terms, and we have 5x plus 11x plus 2. That does check out. So this is the correct answer. Now the other method that we can use is the grouping method.
Remember we had seen that we need a positive 1 and a positive 10. They multiply to give you 5 times 2 is 10. AC is 10. A times C. They also add to give me a positive 11. What we're going to do is we're going to take the 5x squared. We're going to break this apart into 1x and 10x. And then we have this 2 over here. We're just going to sort of underline the first two and the last two. What's in common with these? Well, there's an x in common. So I'm going to divide this term, 5x squared, by x. 5x squared divided by x is 5x. 1x divided by x is 1. What's in common with these? Well, there's a positive 2 in common. 10x divided by 2 is 5x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And we're going to underline these if these are the same, which they are, these binomials. Then we're going to pull that out, just like we used to do with the distributive property. And then what's left over will form a new binomial, x plus 2. And you can see that this is exactly the way it was with the box method. It's just a matter of preference. Okay, let's look at another problem. This time we have 3 times negative 15 or a times c. So a times c is negative 45. Now I'd really like to see what the prime factors are of 45. So I'm going to break this up and do a little bit of a prime factor tree. So negative 45. For the moment I'll ignore the negative. We need 3. We'll go into 45 15 times. 15 is 3 times 5. So this is going to be 3 times 3 times 5 will be the prime factors of 45. Now, don't forget the obvious one, which is 1 and 45. Does 2 work? No, I don't see a 2 in there. 3 I see, so 3 times 15. Does 4 work? No, I don't see any 2s. I would need two twos. Uh, for prime factors for that to work for it to be 4. Does 5 work? Yes, I see a 5. 5 times what's left? We have 9. So 3 times 3, 9. What about 6? No, you'd need a 2 to form a 6. 7? No, I don't see a 7. 8? No, I'd need 3 2's. And 9? I'm up the next column. So these are all the different factors of 45. Now this one I need to think about the signs. I need these since we have a negative here, I need these to subtract. I need the factors to subtract to give me the 4. I also know that these are going to be different signs. So I need something that's going to multiply to negative 45. That's going to add to give me that 4. Well, let's first off, first off, let's find what's going to subtract to give me the 4. 45 minus 1, that's just going to be 44. 15 minus 3 is 12, that's not 4. 9 minus 5, that is 4. So that's the pair I want. Now I need to determine which sign is which. This is going to give me the sign of the larger number, and or the larger absolute value. 9 is the larger absolute value, so it should get the positive, and the 5 should get the negative. Let's double check. 9 times negative 5, does that give me negative 45? Yes. And where did I get the negative 45? a times c. Does 9 minus 5 give me 4? Yes, it does. So these are the numbers that I'm looking for. So I'm going to start off with the box method. Hopefully this time I can draw a little bit better box. Okay, the leading term, the quadratic term, goes in the top left. The constant goes in the bottom right. And then we're going to split this. How can we arrange this as 4x? Well, it would be negative 5x plus 9x. That would add to give me 4x. Could I switch the negative 5x and the 9x? Certainly, I, should, I could. The commutative property of multiplication, remember, you can switch those binomials back and forth. So that's fine. I can switch these back and forth, and I'll still get the same answer. Now, this sign is going to be a negative. It's going to be subtraction because of this sign. This is going to be positive because of that sign. 
And I do like to look at the prime factorization. It does help. It's a little bit of work, but it does help out. It's going to be negative 1 times 5 times x. This is 3 times 3 times x. Negative 1 times 3 times 5. Now, once we've pulled out these signs, you don't worry about the signs again. We're done. We don't do anything else with that. Let's look vertically. I see a 3 that's in common and 1x. Let's look vertically here. I see, remember we're not worrying about the signs. It's already taken care of. I see a 5, and that's it. Let's look horizontally. I see an x, but nothing else. And I see a pair of 3s, so I see a 3 that will pull out and nothing else. So that prime factorization really makes it easier to visualize, even though it's a little bit of work. Now, 3x minus 5, and then x plus 3. That's what I think the answer is, but I need to double check just to be sure. Let's FOIL it. First, outside, inside, last. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3 times 3x is 9x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. So 3x squared, 9x minus 5x is 4x. Does this check out? Yes, it does. So I've gotten the correct answer. It's nice that we can go back and check it. And this one's a little bit different, so if you're taking notes, you may want to put a star by this one. This is going to be a problem that's going to come up several times, and you can really spin your wheels with this one. Sometimes it's going to give you really, really large numbers. The first thing you should always do when you look at a trinomial or a binomial is you're going to factor it. It's to look for a GCF, to look for a greatest common factor. And you could just look at this and say, hmm, you know, I think maybe a 3 goes into it, but there might be something else. Instead of just staring at it and trying to figure that out on your own, go ahead and make a prime factorization. And even though it's going to take a second to do that, it will be worth your time because you're going to make less careless mistakes. And the less careless mistakes we can make, the better. 18 is going to be 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. 33 is 3 times 11. 12 is 2 times 6. And 6 is 2 times 3. So let's look through, is there anything in common? And I also should put those x's in there just to make sure. Do I see any x's in common with all three of them? No, I don't. Do I see, let's see, twos? I see a two here and a two here, but there's not one in that linear term, so that's not going to work. I see one three in all three, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out that three, and what's left over I'm going to sort of notch out one of these 3's, so I know not to use it again. Multiply what's left. 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. Minus. There's not that 3, because I've already pulled it out. Out of each one, pull it out front. 11x plus 2 times 2 is 4. So if you want to, you could just see, you know what, there's a 3 that's in common with these and then divide each one of these by 3. I just kind of prefer the prime factorization. Now once we get this, we know there's no prime factor, there's no uh, greatest common factor anymore. So I'm going to work with this quadratic trinomial. 6x squared minus 11x plus 4. First place I start is looking at the sign in front of the constant. That means that they're going to be the same sign. And we're going to add the factors. We want to look at a times c. a times c in this case is 6 times 4. That's 24. 24, well, let's see, that's 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. And now out of these prime factors, I'm going to build all of the different possible factors. Don't forget 1 and 24, it's sort of the obvious one. Does 2 work? Yes, 2 and 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. Does 3 work? Yes, 3 and 
2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 4, yes, I see two twos. 4 and 6. 5, no, I don't see a 5. And 6, I'm up the next column. So I have all the different possible factor combinations. I need these to add up to 11. So we're going to look through. Uh, there it is. And now we want to look at what these signs should be. They should be the same sign, and we want them to add up to a negative 11. So both of these should have a negative, negative 3, negative 8. Remember, 6 times 4 is 24. Does negative 3 times negative 8 give me 24? Yes, it does. Does negative 3 plus negative 8 give me negative 11? Yes, it does. So I'm confident that these are my two numbers. And I'm going to go with a box method on this. And don't worry, your box doesn't have to be perfect. Top left corner, we have 6x squared. Bottom right corner, we have positive 4. This we're going to rearrange as negative 3x and negative 8x. And do remember to put that x there. If you can remember to go ahead and put an x with each of the left and the top one, you wouldn't have to. But it's a good idea to go ahead. Usually when you try to take too many shortcuts, you end up with a careless mistake, so just be careful on that. This is a negative, so this is going to be subtraction. This is a negative, so that's also going to be subtraction. I'm going to do with the prime factors. So 6 is 2 times 3, and then put in those two x's as well. This is negative 1 times 3 times x. Negative 1 times, let's see, 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. Don't forget the x. And 4 is just 2 times 2. Once you get the hang of breaking that prime factorization up, it does get a little easier. Let's look vertically. I see a 2 that's in common. I also see an x. Looking vertically, we've got a 3 and a 2. There's nothing in common, so we're just going to put a 1. If you don't see anything that's in common, go ahead and put that number 1. Horizontally, I see a 3 and an x, so 3x. Horizontally, on the bottom row, we have 1, 2, 2's. 2 times 2 is 4. So, the one thing that you may make a mistake on, you may have forgotten that we were dealing with a 3. So let's go ahead and put the 3 down. You cannot forget that. Now, if you're checking your work, you would multiply it through and you would realize that you did not get the original. Hopefully at that point you would realize, oh, I needed that 3 that was on there. 3 onto 2x minus 1 and 3x minus 4. And I'm going to go ahead and circle that as my answer, but I want to go back and check. So I'm going to multiply the binomials first and get that trinomial, then distribute the 3 through. First, outside, inside, last, foil. 2x times 3x is 6x squared outside minus 8x, inside minus 3x, last plus 4. Negative 8x plus negative 3x is negative 11x. And now don't forget that we had the 3, so we're going to now go back and multiply by 3. 3 times 6 is 18x squared minus 33x plus 12. And that does check out. So this is my final response. It's a little crowded, so make sure you're circling your response. If you see one that has uh, possibly has a GCF, you have to check for it. And I think the easiest way is just to break down on its prime factors. Again, can you do it without doing the prime factorization? You sure can, but the game is to try to avoid as many careless mistakes as you possibly can, and that's a good way to do it. That'll do it for today. Thank you very much.